much uh, it's very similar to what you learned for calculating areas of rotation or volume of rotation rotational volumes remember that so from what you know we take some curve right and we would calculate the area under that curve and then we would rotate it around, correct? And we would create a volume of revolution. Okay. Um, we're going to do something very similar today with arc length. So is that just the length of the line? Yeah. So arc length uh, basically just to kind of give you a more theoretical look at it, an intuitive theoretical look. You're calculating, let's call this A, you're calculating the length of that line for B. I could show you the development, I just want to kind of give you an idea of it. Um, basically, you remember how we did rectangle rebound sums with with area, it's a very similar development with arc length. You would have these straight lines that would estimate, okay, so that would be kind of your Riemann sum of arc length. But what we want is we want an infinite number of these little lengths, right? Because then it would mirror the length of the, the line perfectly. Okay, and it turns out just like a Riemann sum turns into an integral, so does arc length. Okay. Uh, turns out that the formula involves the derivative. Can anybody take a stab at why it might involve the derivative? Yeah, you're 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 following a line which has slope, right? So that's why it involves the derivative. So it's kind of funky to think of an integral of a derivative, but no, they don't, because you have a root in the way, a square root here. Okay. Most of the time, we're going to give you a nice function that this all kind of falls out for you, and you have an easier derivative or integral to calculate. Okay. The question is. Most of the time, this is a multiple choice question. Can you write the formula? Half the time, it's just they give you a, an equation, and they, the answers are the arc length formula. And sometimes they'll ask you to calculate it. It'll be very simple, just so you don't waste your time on it. Okay. So um, this is the arc length formula. Again, you just kind of have to memorize it. Let's do an example. Find the arc length. S. It's referred to as S. I don't ask why. Because it sucks. Okay. Um, of the graph. of x one twelfth x cubed plus x negative one over one three. Okay.
Okay. Um, first of all, this the function has to be continuous, correct? Is this continuous? F on is F continuous on one three? It is. Now, if I if I would have said negative one to three, is it continuous on negative one to three? Yes or no? <laughs> Why? Oh wait, zero. No. This is one over x, correct? Yeah. Is it continuous at zero? It is not. Okay, so be careful there. Um, the first thing I always do is calculate the derivative, because that's what the formula says, right? Remember. One of your memorization techniques is to write that formula out every single time you do one of these problems. So we need f prime of x, which is what? Messy, isn't it? So the outsides. Right? <laughs> okay, so. Does he even exist? 
Okay, so he exists, but. Um, do you guys, there was a, oh, what was his name? Anyways, one of the running backs from the Seattle Seahawks from long ago, it's like, it had to be when I was in college because I was at an FCA camp. What's his name? Anyways, he was good friends with 50 Cent. He came and visited us at an FCA camp, Seattle Seahawks running back. So, oh, me and Double Quarter, we're really good friends. <laughs> Call the Double Quarter. It's kind of funny. I'll never forget it. Uh, anyways. So take that. Okay. Honestly, I don't pay attention to secular music because of the lyrical content most of the time. Like 50 Cent, you like to talk about killing people? Oh, yeah. Yeah, not good. Okay, can we solve this? How is it education? You will know later. My goal is to teach you about mathematics and life. And life. Can, can I integrate that? Or can I algebraic this simple by a better question? Oh, you mean like put it to the one half? Can I make it like that so that the cats allow? Um, you can take out yeah, can you factor it? No, not yeah. square. You have to take out the, I'll take out the top back. Not square. No, never mind. Does that work? Yeah. It's very close to this one, right? Yeah. Up here? So yeah. It's just the plus now. So you get plus one half instead of minus one half, right? Which is what we that have. Would throw me off having the one okay. So there. when you're looking at these, it's a good it's a good clue to try to factor them, right? So you get a squared and the root cancel, right? Oh man, we're into extending pages now. Yeah. Math just we got real. But can you calculate that? Remember, fractions are our friends, so very nice answer. Very good. Okay. Calculus is my pathway to cocaine. Very nice. Surface area. Ooh. How can we use the arc length formula to calculate the surface area? shape am I using if I revolve this around? A circle. Right? Your cir circle goes oh, around. Was, oh. You're thinking the solid shape. I'm thinking the solid shape, yeah. It's good. It makes sense. With volumes of revolution, we use circle area, pi r squared. 
but what will we use for surface area? Yeah, circumference. Right, so the so the, the surface area will be two pi r times the arc length s. Right? Because that will take our circumference and it will move it along this line. It's the distance from it is, the yeah, this is the f of x, uh -huh. the value of f, the y value. Okay, so now we can build our, our formula, a to b, oh, you know what I'm going to do, something else. 2 pi is a constant, so we can move it out front. The radius is f of x, and then we have the arc length formula. And I didn't even have to look at the book. Okay, yeah, good for you, teacher. Okay. Right? So, again, memorize the arc length if you want. You can just memorize how it, the surface area is built, or you can just memorize. Um, a little more involved, but again, usually we'll either have you write the formula or you will have a very simple one that you can use, like the last one. It was about as hard as it would Can you explain to me why you need a three dimensional table? Because that's where I was probably going to go. Three dimensional? This is three dimensional. Um, I was thinking about three dimensional. We did. I'll explain. I think. Surface area is a shell, right? So you need to use just the shell of the circle, which is 2 pi r, the circumference. And then all we're doing is moving that shell along this line, which is how long is that? Well, that's arc length. So it's still the same principle as cylinder surface area. We're just integrating because this shape here is not straight. Good. Do you want me to show you an example? Okay. Let's see. Yeah, can like arc length, can that go along the y-axis? Uh, oh, of course it can. Yeah, but it's the same answer as if it would give you the axis. It doesn't change the answer this time. Right? So it's not kind of one. Well, there are points in it, but it's not. Never mind. into an algebra problem very quickly. So uh, y prime is Exponent down, three halves times. I'm on, my, I'm on a roll here. It's going to be 
one half, right? Three halves times one third is a half. X to the one half. And I expect you to be able to calculate a shape on me. Your book advises you to do all the algebra and then write the integral. I've been writing the integral and we've been doing the algebra now. Which would you prefer? The way we did the last one? Okay. This whole thing simplify it to one half x to the number of one half minus one half. Oil this. That's all I heard of. Right? The whole thing was one half. So the first times the first is one fourth x to the together with an exponent, <coughs> you add the exponent, <coughs> one-fourth x to the negative one. Okay. And that's a little nicer, isn't it? Okay, whoa! Okay, the outers and the inners give us minus one-fourth and minus one-fourth, right? If I multiply these together, the exponents go to zero. You add them. Oh, yeah. So that's one, and you have one fourth negative. Negative one fourth and negative one fourth is negative half. Plus one is half. Right? And then last times last, we get plus one fourth x. Is that a nice, pretty, perfect square? I think it is. Yeah. It's probably the exact opposite of this one, huh? Yeah. It is. One half x to the negative one half plus one half x to the one half. Lessons here. So those 
square root and the square root cancel each other out, we're left with a foil problem. So foil it, and then finish. Go ahead and finish. Okay. Oh, we got a page extender. Welcome to Calc BC. No, not like this here. Oh, look at that. Those ones give each other nicely. Outers. X. Add the X one. No, no, I was just wondering why you put one over X. First outer, inner. Three halves minus a half is one. And then the outers. Uh, three halves plus a half is two. That's easy enough to integrate. So we write it one half plus one. Third x minus one sixth x squared. Why can't we just give you that? And call it a day. Right? Oh, why? Someone had to make it harder. Now, from here we can we can just do the sixteen power nine. Because I know you can check. Okay. And then if you're you're in surface area, so it's squared units, right? Just keep that in mind. If you if you are keeping track, good. We have log problems or just lots of algebra, so stay organized, nice and neat. Okay. Uh, Eight point one prelims. What exercises? No, no, all the math teachers will 